Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Soap present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. Chandu, master of illusion, knows hundreds of magic tricks. Today, I am privileged to offer you one of Chandu's mysterious and amazing tricks. Chandu calls this trick the Assyrian money changer, and it changes pennies into dimes. Want this trick? Want to mystify and entertain your friends? Want to be a magician just like Chandu? All right. Get that White King box top, send it with a quarter, straight to Chandu, Los Angeles 21, and receive your first Chandu magic trick by return mail. What fun you'll have saying, See this penny? I lay the penny on the table. Now I cover the penny with the mystic ruby block. So, coot, I say. Remove the block, and the penny's gone. Now it's a silver dime. The trick is easy. So easy a child can do it. But it is clever. So clever it is very hard to detect. Start your collection of magic tricks right now with Chandu's Assyrian Money Changer. Just send 25 cents in coin and a White King soap box top to Chandu, Los Angeles 21. Be sure to print your name and address plainly. Frank Chandler, known in the East as Chandu the Magician, has discovered that in the scheme to steal the chest of jewels left to Betty by Abdallah the Bedouin, the venomous dwarf Arenye had the help of Hamid, one of Naji's trusted servants. Believing that Hamid may have overheard his plan to return secretly to Malta, Chandler decides to leave Cairo at once before Roxor can be informed of it. But Dorothy has had an ominous occult warning of disaster and is convinced that her husband, Robert Regent, will never be found alive. However, Chandler persuades her against her will to postpone her return to America until after the trip to Malta. Three days have passed. The present scene opens in the shabby drawing room in the boarded-up old mansion next to the Church of St. Paul on the island of Malta. It is night. Chandu, the magician. Mother, don't try to read in that candlelight. You'll wreck your eyes. No, I won't. Anything's better than just sitting here waiting. I don't blame you for getting the creeps. This place is... It's like one of those cartoons in the New Yorker. What? Well, you know. Torn old curtains and holes in the floor. And, and even the kids look like ghouls. Oh, Bob, don't. This must have been a wonderful house once. Oh, I wish I could have seen it then. Hundreds of candles in the chandeliers. And that old mirror over the mantel, reflecting people in beautiful clothes. I wish those bells would stop. That's what I wish. Oh, they will pretty soon. They never ring very long at a time. I hope so. Bob, did you ever get the idea that everything that was ever reflected in a mirror is still there? This place must be getting you, gal. Oh, <laughs> yes, Betty. Bad enough without imagining things. Can't you and Bob find something to do? <laughs> Poor mother. You didn't want to come here in the first place. And now we're practically locked in. Oh, don't be like that. Well, we might as well be. Uncle Frank said not even to peek out through the gates or somebody'd know we're living here. Well, I'd sure like to know where he went. Look, why don't we go outside for a while, huh? It's pitch dark. Nobody will see us. Oh, you and Betty go. I'll stay here. Oh, let's do then, Bob. Come on. Hey, Bets, that's the door to the back hall. Well, the big front door's stuck, or the key's lost or something. Oh. There must be a million doors in this house. Why don't we go all over it tomorrow and see how many rooms there are? Hmm. I guess 50. How many do you think? Oh, 40 or so. Where does that door go? Well, let's open it and see. Okay. Oh, 
Maybe it was the wine cellar door there. It's pretty close to the kitchen door. You want to go down? We couldn't see anything. It's too dark. Well, I've got a flashlight in my pocket. Oh. There. Boy, if it was a wine cellar, it was a long time ago. There aren't even any shelves left. I wonder who lived here last. They sure are cave happy on Malta. Even the cellars look like catacombs. They do, don't they? Well, what do you suppose that is, Bob? What? There, in the middle of the floor. Oh. It looks like a trap door. Well, it is. Here, hold the flash. I'll lift it up. Can you do it alone? Oh, sure. Well, it's not heavy. It's just stuck. It probably hasn't been open since the Middle Ages. <clears throat> hey. Hey, it looks like a well. Hold the light over here. Right in the solid rock. Gee, those old boys were set for a siege. I wish I could find something. Oh, hand me that little piece of stone by your knee, Bet. What? Oh, oh, here. Now listen. Jeepers. It must go all the way down to sea level. Oh, get back, Bob. You'll fall in. I won't either. Regent! Bob Regent! Daddy! Daddy Lou! Where are you? <laughs> oh, Bob, come away. Oh, nuts. Regent! Come on, come on, wherever you are. Regent! Who's down there? Oh, it's us, Mother. Up here. What on earth are you doing? Oh, she's really steamed up. Come on. All right, hurry. Oh, we were just yelling down the well, Mom. I've never heard anything so unearthly in my life. Close that door and don't go down there again. You don't think anybody could hear us outside, do you, Mother? Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. You can't imagine how it sounded hearing a voice calling Regent, Regent, like a voice from the tomb. Well, you thought it meant Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, it did sound pretty weird, I guess. Hey. Turn that light off, Bob. Frank. I'm sorry I startled you, Dot. I thought I'd have a look around the house before I came in. Well, why are you all standing here in the hall? Oh, the children found an old well in the cellar and... Oh, they... I might have known it. I meant to warn you about that. Oh, have you seen it? The governor told me it was down there somewhere. Well, let's go into the living room. Everything is working out just as I hoped it would, huh? Did Rockthor's boat come? It certainly did. Before daylight this morning. He put into the bay of St. Paul. Oh, was Daddy with him? Yes, he was. Oh. I know it was Robert Todd. You can't be sure. Well, yes, I can. The governor's had the harbors watched ever since I called him from Cairo. Well, then why didn't they grab Rockthor when he landed? I told them not to, Bob. But why? I don't want Rockthor to suspect I'm anywhere near the island. Oh. Nothing is going to slip up this time. Oh, I don't know, Frank. Why not, Doc? I can't help thinking of that sand diviner at Mena House. Don't you remember? He said he saw me going into far countries, seeking, seeking. Well, you sure have, Mom. But he couldn't or wouldn't tell me the end of it. And there at Nodges, there was death in the blue flame. What's this? Oh, she said so. Don't give way to fear, Dot. Not now. Oh, it's easy for you to say. Because I know this will all be over soon. Maybe within a few hours. But if you're sure, why are you so nervous? I'm not nervous, but I've done everything I can, and now I must just wait. And if one word of my plan leaks out, it will fail. Well, how could it? There's nobody here but us. Oh, there could be a hundred spies in this old house, and we'd never know it. Oh, leave it to you. Uncle Frank, can't we do something while we're waiting? Well, we could play tennis if we'd brought our rackets. This room's sure big enough. Oh, I know. Do some magic for us. Make people come out of the big mirror. How did you know about that, Betty? Oh, you don't mean to say it's true. Well... And if it is, I don't want to see it. Oh, I read about it somewhere. Is it really true, Uncle Frank? Can you? Well, not bring them out of the mirror exactly. But it is possible to see the reflections. Or... No. All right, then. But conditions in this old house must be unusually favorable for such a thing. Don't worry. I'm not going to do it. 
You could do just an ordinary trick, couldn't you? Like the rosebush one. Yeah. Or... Oh, I'll turn your chair around if you don't want to see it, Mom. Oh, we could go way over there. The shadows are so Hush, black. Lady. It's the summons. <gasps> Ask him, Frank. Ask the yogi if I'm right or wrong about Robert. Well, let me get the message. Dot, look. This will take away your fear of the mirror. Look up there. You mean you can use the mirror instead of your crystal? Yes, yes. Listen. Tell my sister this, my son. In the mirror of life, he who will may find truth. But the eyes of the fearful will bring disaster. Disaster? Oh, right. The mirror is filled with shadowy faces. You mean you see them? Look beyond them, Dot. Oh, isn't this uncanny, Bob? All those faces with the candles flickering on them. You were the one that wanted to see them. Dorothy, look. The mountain valley and the white cavern. Oh, yes, I see it now. Don't turn away. Look, Dot. Remember my words, my son. Always the river of life must flow to the sea. That is the law. I know it, my teacher. I will not forget. Does he mean you aren't going home with us when Daddy... My way will not be easy. But this is thy work. Wherever you are, I will come. I don't see his face, Frank, do you? Yes. In the light beyond the door. My son. I am listening, my teacher. Tell those thou knowest to cast fear far from them. He means us this time. Chandu, I tell thee this. When the appearance of death confronts thee, do not be deceived. Death? Know in thy heart it is nothing. I say again, be strong. I will remember. Remember and know. Await the call, my son. Wasn't that something? The mirror's all dark like it was before. Oh, I know why you didn't ask him, Frank. But, Dorothy, don't forget what he said. I'll never forget it. Gosh, Mom. It sure looks like you were right about Dad. I guess we won't find him alive after all. like to be a magician? Would you like to mystify your friends with magic tricks? Chandu the magician has a magic trick for you. Chandu calls it the Assyrian money changer. It's a great trick. Changes pennies into dimes. And we'll send it to you for just 25 cents and a white king box top. This trick is fascinating. Listen. You lay a penny on the table. Cover the penny with the mystic ruby block. So coot, you say. Remove the block. The penny's gone, and you see a bright, shining silver dime. Wonderful, isn't it? And it's so simple, you can do it not once, but again and again and again. Your friends will never catch on. To get Chandu's Assyrian money changer, just mail 25 cents in coin and the top from a box of White King soap to Chandu, Los Angeles 21, California. That's Chandu, Los Angeles 21. And remember, nothing washes like soap. There is no soap like White King. You will love White King. Chandu the 
Magician is based on the original radio drama created by Harry A. Earnshaw and is written by Vera Oldham. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu, the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.